Parents are not attending my wedding because I refused to invite their friends who made my life hell. Now they're demanding I cancel everything. I 24F, find myself in a heartbreaking situation, my parents won't be at my wedding. The reason? I refuse to invite their friends, I'll call them the Scots, who made my life a living hell during the year I lived in their guest house. From false accusations to disrespecting my fiancé, things reached a breaking point. Fast forward to wedding planning, and the Scots became a point of contention. When I stood firm on not inviting them, it led to a family fallout. Despite my attempts to mend things, my parents are boycotting the wedding. Long story, in 2021, fresh out of college, I moved to a new state for a job. Facing high rent, the Scots, family friends of my parents, offered me their guest house for a mere $300 a month. Little did I know, this seemingly sweet deal would lead to a year of turmoil. The Scots, longtime friends and business partners of my parents, had three kids. As soon as I settled in, the Scots became excessively involved in my personal life, particularly my relationship. The situation took a dark turn as they fabricated scenarios to my parents, accusing me of promiscuity, rarely being home, and even planning to secretly move in with my boyfriend. Their disdain for my boyfriend was palpable, treating him with passive aggression, condescension, and even making derogatory comments about him being adopted. The interference escalated with family meetings where they labeled me as a poor influence on their teenage daughter, criticizing my boyfriend, whom they had met only three times. And I have to add, my BF and I don't drink or smoke and both have careers, my BF is a perfectly good man and was always respectful to them despite their poor treatment. The dad of the Scott family went to the extent of sharing his marriage problems and lack of a sex life, blurring the boundaries of landlord-tenant slash inappropriate relationships. The breaking point came when the fridge in the guest house broke, and they insisted I foot the bill for a $900 replacement. Their influence over my parents was significant, as my parents rarely had my back and sided with the Scots, constantly belittling my boyfriend without reason. By the end of 2022, I decided to move out with some girlfriends of mine, leaving without saying goodbye to avoid further confrontation. Fast forward to the summer of 2023, my boyfriend and I were living together in a new state, and he proposed. To my surprise, when he asked my parents for their blessings, they were supportive and enthusiastic. My parents were even flown out to witness our engagement. As we delved into wedding planning in the fall of 2023, my fiancé's parents generously offered to finance the wedding. Strangely, my mother declined involvement in the planning, claiming she hated it. Despite repeated invitations from myself and my future mother-in-law, she insisted we handle everything on our own, a departure from the typical involvement of the mother of the bride. My mill did fly my mom out to NY for wedding dress shopping which was fun, but my mother insisted on the trip that this was all she wanted to do. Winter 2023 brought a text from my dad, urging me to invite the Scots. Respectfully declined, citing the distress it would cause me on our special day. This refusal triggered a nuclear war within the family. My parents, adamant about the Scots' inclusion, declared they wouldn't attend the wedding. My dad accused me of starting my happy life by destroying his, and my mother uninvited me to Christmas. In attempts to salvage the situation, I apologized and tried to explain my decision. However, my parents were unreceptive, hurling insults and baseless accusations claiming my side of the family has been cancelled. My mother then flipped the scripted and threatened to expose details on social media of my disrespect to the family if I didn't show up for Christmas. Despite exchanging Christmas and birthday greetings via text I've not spoken to them about the situation, the pain of their absence and the harsh words lingers as I approach my wedding day. I'm confused, I'm guilty, I'm in pain. The fallout, all because I refuse to invite the Scots. Edit, we are having a destination wedding and the festivities will begin three days prior to the wedding. So if caved in and invited the Scots, I would have to endure up to four days of them. I don't want to walk around the resort and turn around and have to see them and instantly get into a bad mood. Also, I am afraid if my parents decide to show up without the Scots that they will cause drama. Comments, Miss Murderpants, Op, please don't cave. The emotional manipulation your parents are doing is BS. I'd mail, yeah snail mail my parents a letter. Parents, these so-called friends of yours are no real friends. If you insist on picking them versus your daughter then so be it. Our relationship is over. Think on this. You will miss out on my wedding and any involvement with any children I may have because those people mean more to you than your daughter. I sincerely hope you can live with yourselves and have good reason for your actions. I love you both but I do not like you right now. You are still invited. I hope you make the right choice. Op, could those people be holding something over your parents like they loaned them money? And you could invite them and if you go this way I would tell your folks that they are responsible for them. If they say one bad thing to you slash spouse they and those people will be escorted out by security. And if you do go this route, I would hire security. I wouldn't invite the kids. Graham, I'm so sorry. But yes, this is as odd as you think it is. For some reason I'm stuck on your father accusing you of destroying his life. Because his friends aren't invited to your wedding? How can that affect his life so dramatically? Do you know what he's talking about? Op, the Scots invest money into my dad's small business and they split ownership 
In the initial text from my parents, my dad said that he has been losing sleep for months thinking about how he was going to tell the Scots they're not invited to my wedding. I think my dad is afraid that if he doesn't invite them, the Scots will get pissed and pull out. This is speculation, but if this is the case, then some people are right and this is like a blackmail thing. But I don't want to feel guilty. Why do I have to invite people who give me a visceral reaction of anxiety and stress just because my dad is afraid to tell them no? Final Ocelot 6806, you don't. It's your wedding and should be the happiest day of your life surrounded by people who love you and sincerely care for you. Don't feel guilty, you're not. Useful Commission 76, making derogatory comments about him being adopted criticizing my boyfriend belittling my boyfriend it seems like a perfectly reasonable decision for the boyfriend and his parents, who are the ones financing the wedding, to decline to invite these Scott people. I don't think the bride or her parents have a choice in this matter. Op, my future in-laws don't want the Scots there. But they would be willing to bite the bullet for me because they feel terrible about my parents not attending. They're such good people, but there's no way in hell I'm going to let that happen, especially since they are doing so much for me out of the kindest of their hearts. However, this actually came up in the argument with my parents and my dad literally said I don't have to ask your fiancé or his mother for permission to invite who I wanted the wedding of my daughter. My parents say the Scots did everything out of protection. It makes me so angry. Update, I woke up this morning to a bunch of texts from my mother. She demanded that I end my engagement, cancel the wedding, quit my job, and move back to their home. She started saying things like I know you're unhappy. It's okay, you tried. Now it's time to come home. You have some maturing you need to do. This irks me so much. My parents literally gave their blessings for my marriage six months ago. Now they want me to change my entire life because they're mad they didn't get their way. I responded and said this is my life and if they don't want to respect my decisions, that's on them. But I am in utter shock. I am financially independent of my family, I have a great job, loving partner. How do parents come up with this shit? Comments, warehouse empty, personally, I think I'm at the point in life where I would reply. Thank you for the perspective, you're right, I am unhappy, and I have tried. I really thought you had the potential to be better parents but I guess not. I do not see how moving back in with you, the problem, would fix anything except cause me even more distress. Thank you for the insight and I'm sorry that you won't be at my wedding, but actually it's probably for the best, you are causing me the most unhappiness right now and I am done trying to please you, I know after trying that it is a futile endeavor. Partner and I will have a great time celebrating with people who chose to support us and love us unconditionally. Good night. Turbulent Error 4, Narcissists often have a strong need for control and validation. When they perceive a loss of control or if things don't go their way, they may react with manipulation, guilt tripping, or attempting to assert dominance. In this case, your mother's demands may stem from a desire to control your life choices and maintain a sense of authority. It's essential to establish and maintain boundaries for your well-being. Yep I yep underscore nope and nope, I think most people who have narc parents hit a moment in their life where they come to the realization that the nice parents, the loving parents, the parents who genuinely want to see you thrive and be happy. Those parents don't exist and they will probably never exist. At least not for us. And it's almost like you go into mourning with that realization. It's as if the parents you wanted died and now you're forever stuck with these replacement ghouls who call themselves your parents. And just like a real death, you go through all the stages of grief when that realization hits. And yeah, it's heartbreaking, and I understand why you are using that term. All you can do is realize that your happiness can never depend on them in any way. You find your own happiness and then put boundaries up to keep them from stomping all over it. And that's what you're doing by drawing the line over these friends. Stay strong, because this is probably going to happen with all your major life events going forward. If these were just some random friends of your parents who you didn't know, I might suggest you give in just to get a nice day with your parents. But these are people who abused you and your fiancé. They bore false witness against you and your fiancé. They are malicious people. And if you don't put down consequences for this type of behavior, they will just keep on being malicious. If you let them come, they will pull the exact same behavior at your wedding, and nobody should spend their wedding hearing lies told about them. Also make sure your vendors are all password protected, so your parents can't make changes and have a plan for these friends showing up unannounced to your wedding. Good luck. P.S. I like to screw with my narcs when they're being particularly ridiculous, so I would have responded with something like, I know you're unhappy. It's okay, you try to be a decent parent. Now it's time to go to therapy to figure out why you're such a self-centered jerk. You have some maturing you need to do. But, that kind of thing is likely to cause a meltdown. When that happens, I just point and laugh. But, if you're in any way dependent on them, financially, emotionally, etc., it's probably best not to go this route, because narcs can be very destructive when they're melting down. After the wedding, though. Now on to the next story. Story 2. I'm asexual and caught my girlfriend cheating with her engaged friend. So I took her out for a romantic dinner and exposed everything in front of everyone. My girlfriend and I have been together for 5 years and I was planning on proposing to her before all of this happened. 
We met in college and now that we've both graduated and have good jobs, it seems like it's the right time to take the step forward. She was practically everything I wanted in a partner. She was kind and funny, and she always put other people before herself. I have wanted to start a family practically my entire life and she seemed like the perfect partner to do that with. She wasn't the first woman that I had been with, but I was the first guy she had been with. Just a little backstory about me, I've never really felt the drive to have sex that a lot of other men do. I see in popular media how it's almost a compulsion that a lot of guys have, I've always felt someone indifferent towards it. Through some friends, I've been able to come to the conclusion that I might actually be asexual. I don't mind sex, I've had it many times but it's normally something that I do just for the sake of a relationship. When my girlfriend and I first hooked up, she told me that she thought I didn't like her because I never made a move on her. I've never been the one to initiate anything because I genuinely don't think about it. When I told my girlfriend that I thought I might be ace, she was a little bit upset about it. She didn't know what it meant for our relationship if I didn't want to have sex. I understood her concerns and I told her that if she wanted to find someone else who could be more aggressive sexually then I would support her. Of course, I told her we would be breaking up and we could continue being friends. After a long discussion, we decided that we wanted to continue our relationship. Again, I still had sex and I didn't have a problem with that so our compromise was that she would just have to be more upfront about when she wanted it. I know this sexuality seems confusing, so just a brief explanation of it before moving on. I am a sex-neutral asexual, meaning that I don't have any aversions to sex I just don't personally feel a need to have it. Some asexuals are aromantic and don't want any relationships at all. Some, like me, still want to be in a relationship and have a partner. I'm stressing this here because I was very vocal about this after our conversation. I told my girlfriend that if she ever felt like this wasn't working out, I wanted her to tell me so we could move our separate ways. I didn't want her to feel like she was having to sacrifice a part of the relationship to be with me, but I wanted a monogamous relationship. I had no interest in opening anything up so we could still continue our emotional relationship while she was sleeping with someone else. After I told her everything, we got back to normal pretty quickly. A couple of times a week she would initiate sex and we would have it like we always did. Over the course of about six months, she slowly stopped initiating it. Again, I really didn't think about it much. There was a point while we were watching a TV show together and a sex scene came on that the sudden realization hit me. I asked her if everything was okay, and she told me that it was. I was a little bit concerned when I realized we hadn't had sex. I knew that it was something that my girlfriend thought was important and she really enjoyed it herself. I couldn't help but worry that she was getting that from somewhere else. I let the days pass and she still hadn't done anything to initiate sex with me. Eventually, I asked her about it outright. She told me that she just hadn't really been in the mood, but assured me that there was nothing going on. I felt comforted hearing her tell me that outright. At least I felt that way until I saw a mark on her neck. It was something that she was clearly trying to cover up with makeup, but the collar of her sweater rubbed it off just a bit. It was clearly some kind of hickey. I didn't say anything right away, instead, I just pretended like I didn't see anything. I knew I needed to try to figure out what was going on before she continued to lie to me. She had recently taken up a yoga class and after doing some thinking I realized that the dates kind of coincided with when we hadn't been sleeping together. I thought that if she were taking the time to cheat on me, that might have been it. So, I waited for her to tell me she was going to yoga one evening and I followed her there. I was right to suspect that she wasn't actually doing yoga because she met a guy at a bar. It was hard for me to make out who he was at first because he was facing away from the window, but as they left together I recognized him instantly. He was a friend of hers that we would occasionally hang out with. Because he was her friend, seeing them together wasn't damning in itself. They could have just been grabbing a drink, but I didn't understand why she would lie about going to yoga. I needed to find something more concrete before I went to her with this. I followed them as they went back to what I figured was his apartment. While they were inside, I did a little digging on the guy since I didn't really know him too well. As I did, I remembered that my girlfriend had even been talking to me about how excited she was for his wedding. He had just gotten engaged to another woman. I really hoped that if she was cheating on me with anyone, it wasn't him. Knowingly sleeping with your engaged friend is a crappy thing to do. I couldn't get any information from watching his apartment, so I just went home and waited for her to get back. Before I could even ask her how her evening was, she started telling me about all of the yoga stuff she's been doing. She was lying to me completely. When she went to sleep, I went through her phone to see if I could gather any evidence from there. I went to their text messages and I saw a lot of concerning exchanges. They had sent each other nude pictures, he told her that he would have never gotten engaged if he knew she wanted him, and she talked about how she couldn't understand my sexuality. The tone of their messages felt very judgmental of me and very invalidating. It doesn't seem like it from this post, but having this realization has taken a toll on me. Hearing somebody that I cared about talk about it so flippantly was upsetting. I took plenty of screenshots, especially of the exchanges where he mentioned not wanting to get married, and I sent them to myself. I had no idea who his fiancé was, but after a little bit of research, I found out that she was a recent law school graduate and had just gotten a job at a local firm. I reached out to her to schedule a meeting, making it seem like I had a legal issue. 
Thankfully, she had one free consultation available so I took that. When I met with her I came clean about why I was really there. I explained to her how I knew her and I showed her the evidence that I had. She was broken up about it, but she thanked me for telling her before she ended up being legally bound to him for the rest of her life. She had always been concerned about his relationship with my girlfriend. She mentioned that it was obvious to her that they had some kind of feelings for each other, but since they were both in relationship she didn't think anything would come of it. As I was driving home, I just kept thinking about how they were talking about me and I didn't feel like telling the fiancé was enough revenge. I wanted to do something to really hurt them. Like I said earlier, I really was planning on marrying her. I had a ring and everything. My girlfriend loved the big romantic displays, so I figured I'd give her one. I knew that the man she cheated on me with was about to get dumped by his fiancé, and I wanted my girlfriend to have a similar experience. I took her out to a nice restaurant and at the end of the evening, I paid the band to play our song. When it came on she commented on it, and I told her I orchestrated it for the evening. I got down on my knee and I started out pretending like I was proposing. She was very excited and smiling while crying. Everything about her reaction made it seem like she would have married me. If that was the case, why cheat on me? I stood up before I asked her the final question and I told her that was what might have happened if I didn't find out she was sleeping with another man. Her face completely fell and all of the people who were watching us with happy smiles immediately turned away. I explained how I knew everything, making no effort to keep my voice down. One of the staff at the restaurant actually had to escort us out because we were causing a scene. I broke everything off with my girlfriend after that and kicked her out of our apartment. She has messaged me countless times begging me to give her another chance. She tried to explain her actions by telling me that she felt like it was my fault. I'll admit, a huge part of it might have been. I didn't even realize we weren't having sex until it had been weeks since we stopped. But I told her from the start that she should tell me if she wanted out. It seemed like she wanted to be with me while also sleeping with the other guy, and I wasn't okay with that. I ended up blocking her number, but she continues to call me from burner numbers that she downloads. I'm planning on changing phone plans to get a new number and moving out of my apartment so she won't know where I am.